Hi, thank you for joining me today. And today's layout is for the Hey Little Magpie August Challenge over in the Hey Little Magpie Chat and Inspiration group on Facebook. I shall leave it linked below. And this month, Jag Gisela is setting the challenge and she has asked us all to use circles. So I am definitely going to use circles on this layout. <laughs> it's an explosion of circles. It's very busy and um, lots of different techniques in it. So you can see the first technique I'm doing is blending ink through a mask that I've created. So just grab my circle punches. I think these two circles are two inches and two and a quarter inches. Use some scrap card to punch the circles out and then using that as a mask to push my inks through. And I'm using one of the mini blending brushes that we sell at Hey Little Magpie to do that just for control and also so that I can add some darker and lighter shading. So I punched various um, circle sizes and I'm just going to go through these four inks that I've chosen because these are the colours that are in my photo. Now you will have seen the photo I've already cut into circle and I've used those infinity dies from Hero Arts that we sell at Hey Little Magpie. They're a fantastic investment set. If you haven't got any circle dies and you have a die cutting system, I would highly recommend them. They cut through like butter and they've got every circle you can imagine right from tiny up to a very large one. So I chose, I think, the third one in from the biggest um, to cut my four by six photo down, and that gave me the best option. So I started off with um, shaded lilac, which is the purple colour, and that's the colour of Amelia's jacket that she's got on. And now I'm going through with lumberjack plaid. Um, that's the colour of Ollie's jumper that he's wearing. So just, again, using the various different circle sizes. The next colour is Scattered Straw, which I thought worked nicely with the colour of the fire. And I'm not too worried about the red and yellow blending together because I just think it creates really nice colour. And finally, the green is Mowed Lawn, which works nicely with the T-shirt George has got on. So overlapping these circles, I love the opacity of these colours that you do still slightly get the translucency. So they do layer over really nicely, but not enough that the colours blend too much. So this technique is just splattering with water. I just use my water spray and then lifting that up and that lifts some of the ink from the circles and creates this gorgeous splattering. So I thought that would be really nice. I'm using Vicky Booten print shop papers and on the vellum stick, the vellum sheet, um, she has various numbers and there was a number five. And of course there are five children in the photo. And also this is the 5th of November for bonfire night. So I thought that would work really nicely. Now I am a bit lazy. So um, I'm, I haven't got my dye machine out <laughs> for this piece because I know I'm going to distress the edges of the circle. I decided just to cut it out with my scissors and then distress the edges after. Um, so it didn't have to be a perfect circle. So I didn't bother running it through my cutting machine. So just using my Tim Holtz edge distresser to distress the edges of this. So while I'm doing this, please do check out the Hey Little Magpie Chat and Inspiration group on Facebook. We have challenges every month set by my wonderful creative team. And um, there's a chance to win a thousand magpie points, which equates to £10 to spend in our shop. If you're international and don't like the postage charges that we have, we do have plenty of digital products that you can buy. And obviously there's no postage charge with those. So that's a good option if you want to join in the fun. So I'm just starting to punch out various circles now from some of the papers in the print shop collection to add to my ever-growing cluster of circles. <laughs> um, so I started with this beautiful mustard colour paper with the dots on and punched a few circles from that. And then I went on to the black and white geometric piece and punched that. And now I'm moving on to this 6x8 paper, which has these gorgeous circles. So I just punched a couple of those and again, just roughing the edges up every time. And I will keep these fairly rough on the page so that they're slightly lifted from where I've been holding them to rough up the edges. You can see that they're, they're not creased, but they are sort of manipulated so that the edges stand up a bit. And I'll just add the glue to the centre of the circle so that you have that texture and dimension on the page. That top one, you can see I've run off the top of the page, so we'll be snipping that edge off once I stick it down and then I'll add the um, bit that I've cut off to the bottom of the page just for balance. I do like to mirror things when I create layouts. So, so far we've blended ink through circle stencils that we created. We've um, punched circles 
and distress the edges from paper and I'm just debating what I'm going to do next. So first of all I stick these circles down just with my wet glue as I say in the centres. Um, so trimming off this top edge and then adding that piece to the bottom. And I want to keep going with the circle theme so I bring out, um, well first of all I'm going to mount the photo onto foam pads just to raise it up above the, all the other circles. As I say it's a very busy layout so I just want to give it a bit of prominence on the page. But once I've done that I bring out some All and Create stamps which are circular elements and using my black archive link I stamp some of these around the page and you'll see how adding the black really makes these other colours pop and brings everything together. So I should have stamped on a scrap piece of paper because that stamp didn't come out terribly clearly. So I'm just going to go back over it and bring in the ink to the stamp rather than the stamp to the ink. <laughs> and that stamp's much better. So now I've used that one, I'm going to move on. First, oh sorry, no, I do overlap at the top and bottom of the page just so that um, it provides continuity and it's not all contained within the page, taking it off the page. Um, makes it, it draws the eye right to the very edges of the page. So just using a scrap of card that was the mask that I'd created to take that off the page. And then I'm going to go in with another stamp from the same set. And this is a squiggle circle and just like a doodled circle, slightly smaller than those ones. And I add that in a few places around the page as well. And you can see it's really starting to build up and come together now. So overlapping some of the circles and just leaving them freestanding in other areas. So now I've done the stamping, we've done the punching and the masking. Um, I'm going to use the masks again with my gold texture paste from the Kibutin to add some gold texture. So using my mini blending brush again, I just go into this and the first thing, first circle I do a very light layer so it's almost like using it as a paint and then the next one I'm a bit more bold and I want to get some of that texture from the texture paste so um, just adding a really nice thick layer to get that the third one I go even thicker using a different size stencil so just cutting that off so I don't get the gold everywhere and then punching out with my one inch punch and adding the gold and I do a lovely thick layer and I really like the look of that. So I just want to add a little bit more and then I shall move on to the next technique. So just bring in a couple more in, a half circle there overlapping the paper and that does it. I don't want to go too crazy because I'm going to bring lots of different techniques in here. So the next thing I'm going to is do is one of the punched out circles um, as a mask and then blend ink over the top of it. So I'll have a white circle with blended ink around the edges. So just using that same stencil brush and fading the ink towards the edges as I blend out from the center circle. So because I've got one on the left hand side there, I'm going to add another one to the bottom right. And you can see it creates almost like a starburst, sunburst type effect with the rays coming out. I really like the look of that. And I start with my brush actually on the circle, just so that the big heavy ink starts on the circle rather than in the blended area. So I decide that I'm going to stick the photo down just so that I can see exactly where things are going now because the page is getting pretty full. <laughs> and um, I'm just going to add a couple of the Ellie Studio stamped labels for my journaling and date. So a red one and a yellow one. The red one's going to have the date stamped on it and um, the yellow one I shall write the journaling. There's only a tiny bit of journaling to say just where we were. So just using my sticks to tape runner to stick those down and they are the only rectangular elements on the page. Everything else is circular. So now coming in with some of the resin dots that we set at Hey Little Magpie, just a little blue one there um, to fill in that gap next to the yellow label. And then I've got one at the bottom in orange and one at the top in pink. And then I'm adding my date and it doesn't work terribly well. I think the label must have been a bit wet. So I pull this one up and just replace it with a, <laughs> another one. The beauty of using a stamped label, you can create as many as you need. <laughs> so trying again and I move the label up to the side <laughs> so that if it doesn't work, I'm not having to pull it back up again. And that works beautifully. 
So if I stick that down and then on the yellow underneath, I just add toasty marshmallows and Auntie Lindsay's because that's what they were doing. So in this circle that I created by ink blending, I'm just going to write bonfire night, bonfire around the top of the circle and night along the bottom. And then I shall go into my stash and pull out one of these puffy heart stickers that we sell at Halo for Magpie to add in the middle of that circle. Next, I'm coming in with these matte enamel dots in black. These really add a pop to the page. So just scattering those in varying sizes around the place. And it's bringing more of that black in, which is really nice. And then once that's done, I decide that I want to add a little bit of stitching. So just in this gap here, I'm going to create a starburst with some black wax twine. So just poking the holes first um, with some foam behind just to poke through with my needle and then I'm just adding this running stitch with a central point and then going out to all the holes that I created. Don't worry, I won't make you watch all of this. <laughs> you just see the first couple of stitches and then that's it finished. And again, it's a different circular um, technique really, isn't it? So these circles that I'm adding now are the Ellie Studio label stamp set again. So just cut one in half and then I'm cutting off the corner so I can tuck this right into the corner. I want to try and create a flow from the bottom, from the top left to the bottom right of the page. So just bringing things out slightly to the left at the top and to the right at the bottom. So um, this is the green circle that I used for that ink blending technique and I decided to add that to the page because it's really cute. Um, so just not wanting to waste that, so I bring that in. And then I decide to bring in another one of the black and white pieces. Like I say, just building up that left-hand corner slightly. This is another one of those LE Studio stamped labels. And then some flair, of course, circular elements. It has to be flair, doesn't it? So these are from the print shop flair um, sentiments. One that says today at the top there, and then one that says love this at the bottom. And those colours work really nicely with the colours that I've got going on. So next, sprinkling some sequins just from my stash, some purple and also some um, matte gold. They work really nicely. And again, it's just bringing in some more circular elements. Won't make you watch me sticking those down. <laughs> but trust me, it was just wet glue and stuck down. And then um, I'm bringing in my whole reinforcer punch from We Are Memory Keepers. Um, one of my viewers said the other day that it reminds her of olive slices. And I can't stop thinking about that now she said that. So yes, my black olive slice is going over my page. <laughs> just adding a few. And again, I'll, I'll glue those down off camera. So now some black Nouveau Deluxe Crystal Drops. So just Nouveau Crystal Drops, aren't they? There's no Deluxe in the title. And just scattering those around the page. And they're slightly smaller than the matte enamel dots and obviously glossy rather than matte. So they're adding a different texture and look. So almost finished with those. And then I add a couple on either side of the heart in that circle. Just to finish that off, I felt it looked a little bit empty. But bringing those dots in really finishes that off nicely. And finally, I'm going to cover the photo and add some gold splatters with my gold watercolour paint. And that does it. This is a number 10 brush. We sell these now at Hey Little Magpie and they are great for creating bigger splatters about the page. And that's the page finished. I really hope you've enjoyed this. Do check out the challenge that we've got going on and join in. I'd love to see your creations and how you use circles on your page. Other than that, I shall see you very soon. Thanks very much. Bye.